What's up YouTube? How are you doing today? Chana D, your Techno Dad here, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to choose the right AV receiver. And we're going to get into it right after the jump. And I'm back. Now, if you're new to the channel and you want to learn about 4K, home theater, and audio products and how to set them up properly, you should consider subscribing because I'm here to help. And don't forget to hit that bell so you get notified when I go live for a subscriber Q&A and answer all your questions and when the next video gets released. Well, now that that housekeeping's out of the way, let's get into it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are again with another viewer requested video. A couple of weeks back, somebody asked if I could walk them through what I do when I'm choosing an AV receiver or what I'm looking for or what's going on in my mind when I'm doing that. So I decided to make this video on how to choose the right AV receiver. Now, we're gonna go over a few items that I think are kind of important, and then after all that, we're gonna actually jump on the computer and we're gonna go shopping. And I'm gonna take some models that I just see on like Crutchfield's website, you know, show you guys what I'm thinking when I'm looking at these AV receivers. And you know, it's gonna be different for everyone, so that's my plan, and uh, yeah, let's do it. So the first thing that we need to take into consideration when we're buying an AV receiver is the almighty dollar. How much are you willing to spend? Okay, so setting your budget is the first thing. Are you in the like low end, you know, 500 to 700, you know, or are you lower than that? You only wanna spend 250 to 400, right? Um, are you 700 to 1200? Are you in the 1200 and up? Are you in the $2,000 and up? You know, it all depends. How much do you wanna spend on your AV receiver? So what kind of meanders off of budget is, what is it you're looking for? Are you looking for Dolby Atmos and DTSX? Is that the kind of thing you're looking for? You know, is this an upgrade from an older system and you wanna get the newest thing that's out on the market? Or are you brand new to this whole thing and you want some better sound because you got a TV that's super thin and therein, the sound is thin. So that's kind of the next thing. You got your budget and then you got your goal. Like what's my goal? Is it a 5.1.2 Dolby Atmos system? Is it a 5.1.4 Dolby Atmos system? So are we going seven channel, nine channel, 11, ch 11 channel? What is it that you're trying to achieve here? And do you have speakers already? And are you trying to mate those speakers up with the proper AV receiver? because we have to, you know, think about uh, impedance that's measured in ohms, are the speakers four ohm, six ohm, eight ohm, what kind of power is the AVR producing when you're first making that budget consideration? These are all things to think about. You might wanna spend a little bit more for an AV receiver that's got more power. Let's say if you're running eight ohm speakers that really aren't that sensitive and you're gonna need more power to get them to where you want to go volume wise. All right, so the next thing we need to look at is connectivity. What can we plug into this AV receiver and does it have as many inputs and outputs as I need? Okay, that's a big question right now. Now, if you're running all HDMI, like all digital sources with 4K and HDR, you need to make sure that all those ports on the back of that AVR can support 4K with HDCP 2.2 because some AV receivers might only have three that support that and like two that are regular, which you could probably hook up, you know, your cable box or a satellite box to, but you need to make sure that it has exactly how many, you know, 4K HDR compatible HDMI inputs you need for all of your devices. I have like one, two, three, four, four that I, have plugged into my system and I usually need one or two more for the 4k blu-ray players that I test so I'm gonna need a lot of HDMI inputs now what other inputs are you gonna need do you have a turntable so does it have a phono stage that's a good question uh, what about uh, Dolby Vision do you need something that has Dolby Vision compatibility that's another thing to look at as well and what about pre outs do you wanna add amplification later or do you wanna have that option to add amplification later? Then maybe you want uh, pre-outs for all those channels. 
Do you not like using the ARC or audio return channel through HDMI? And do you like to use optical and coaxial for other, you know, items in your rack? Then, you know, maybe you need to look at that as well. Now, if you have older or legacy equipment that uses composite video or even component video, then you have to take that into consideration as well. So connectivity is very important with your AV receiver as the AV receiver is the hub and the brains of your system. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about in that aspect, I did make a video explaining what AV receivers do and I'll put a link to that down in the description and a card up top. So now let's move on to DACs. What is a DAC? We could talk about DACs all day and night long. A DAC is a digital to analog converter. And basically what this does is it turns the ones and zeros into sound that come out the speakers so that you can hear what it is, okay? And there's all kinds of different DACs. There's a Wolfson DAC, there's an ESS Sabre, there's a AKM DAC, there's a Burr Brown DAC. There's all kinds of DACs and they all pretty much do the same thing and they all sound a little bit different. Now this sound is totally subjective and it's hard for me to answer the question like, which one's better? Well, I don't know. I couldn't tell you that because if I say one's better and you listen to it and you, you can say, oh, this one sounds like crap. What are you talking about? It's very subjective. So things to look for when you're looking at AV receivers, what kind of DAC is inside the AV receiver? Now there's two numbers that are always associated with DACs and that's bit depth and sample rate. Now, as far as bit depth is concerned, usually you'll see 24 bit and a sample rate of 196 kilohertz. Now, there are others that'll go higher than that. And some DACs are 32 bit DACs that have 396 kilohertz. So when you have these higher numbers on a DAC in a mid-range AV receiver, that might be a cool thing to notice or look at. Like I said before, it's a very subjective thing. Some people like the sound of the ESS Sabre DACs. Some people say that sounds too clinical. Some people like the musicality of the AKM DACs. And it's kind of like a toss up. Chances are, are you gonna hear the difference in the digital to analog converters? Probably not. But if you go for like a mid-range receiver that has a really awesome DAC and they advertise the crap out of that DAC, chances are that's a pretty good DAC and something good to go with. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about are streaming services. What streaming services do you currently use and is it a requirement of your AV receiver to have those in its arsenal. What am I talking about? Apple Music, do you need Spotify? Do you need title support? What of those things are you gonna need? And then an offshoot of that is, do you need voice? Like Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant? Is that a requirement for you to have that system integrated into your AV receiver? We don't know, it's up to you. I don't right now, but it would be kinda cool to check out, I guess. And I think the last thing to consider, I'm sure there's more and I'm just kind of trying to get, you know, just a general base of things that you guys got to think about. And some of you may not care for zone two or zone three, but that is another consideration because some of you out there might want a second room with the ability to play music from the main room that's different in a different room. And then you can still have like, you know, your TV or whatever going on in another room. Zone two means, Pretty much, uh, so you have some speakers in a separate room that you connect to your AVR, and you can either power those speakers from the AVR and send a signal to that other room with, you know, like an analog or a digital source, or you have zone two pre-outs that you can send to a, another integrated amplifier in a different room, or let's say you have a patio or deck and you want to put two speakers out there and you want it to mirror what's happening on the inside of the house, you can do that. Or you can have different music outside and the inside where the main system is, you know, kid could be watching TV or your wife could be watching TV and you could be out by the pool lounging, listening to some Pink Floyd. I don't know. Anyway, if you want a zone two or zone three, those are considerations you need to look into as well. All right, everybody, enough of me yapping away. Now let's go jump onto the computer and check out some AV receivers. Oh yeah. All right, everybody, what is going on? We are here at the Crutchfield site and 
let's check out some of these AV receivers. So as you can see, it starts off with five channel receivers. And if you guys are looking to just get a five channel AV receiver, 5.1 system in your house, you know, definitely check out these options here. You know, we've got Sony one for 225, a new Sony one that's coming in at 249, which is normally actually 279, and a Denon that's 279. Now, if you wanted to go like the, you know, lowest you could go or the least expensive, definitely check out this Focal Sib 5.1 pack. It was 800 bucks and it's still on sale for 50% off. So $400 gets you a Focal 5.1 setup. Now this is gonna be great for a smaller room and of course everybody that's on a budget that wants to do this way less than $1,000. So 400 there and let's say, let's say you splurge and you go with either the Denon or this Yamaha at 280, you're at 680, put in some cables and you know speaker stands or whatever you need you're probably in it for about 850 if that. Of course, there could be taxes and shipping and whatever. But uh, let's go to some Atmos receivers, some seven channel ones. Now here they're starting out with this new Sony. Um, then we have this uh, Onkyo NR676, which is the one I have for the channel. These are all about $400, okay? So 380, let's check this one out. It's on pre-order. Let's first thing I do is always check out the check out the backside. Yeah. All right, HDMI 4K HDCP 2.2. So we got four inputs HDMI that will support 4K HDR. Cool. Uh, only one optical, four uh, um, analog inputs. Now, if you're the type of person that just has like a cable box, an Xbox, a PlayStation, or a streaming box, if you got four HDMI inputs and you don't really need too much else, this might be a good option. Um, 90 watts of channel saying for two channels driven. Now, you guys know, like I always say, you know, you got to be weary and skeptical about wattage that these manufacturers are. Uh, displaying because there are no standardizations from brand to brand you have no clue really exactly how many watts are coming out of this thing oh now this is pretty interesting it supports hdr 10 dolby vision and hlg so hey you know not bad not bad um there aren't too many features clearly but uh this isn't bad it looks like it doesn't have any streaming services or support for streaming services so maybe if that's not an issue for you hey you should check this out all right uh, let's go to this this is the Onkyo NR676 now if we check out the back of this guy this one actually has uh, quite a bit of connectivity as you can see we've got six HDMI inputs HDCP 2.2 and two HDMI outputs so that's always nice now with this, you can actually plug in nine speakers, but remember, only seven will be powered. You've got two component video inputs. Uh, you even have a phono stage. So if you have a turntable, you definitely need to be looking for a phono stage. Two subwoofer pre-outs and a zone two line out as well. Now, now here they're saying 100 watts per channel into eight ohms. And let's keep going down and check out what we've got here. Pandora, Spotify, Tidal, Deezer, TuneIn, Apple AirPlay, DSD support. So we got a whole bunch of stuff. Now here's what, what's interesting. They have a 32-bit, 384 kilohertz Asahi Kasai. I, am I saying that right? Hopefully. Well, this is Asahi Kasai microprocessor, so AKM. That's what that stands for. Um, that's actually pretty good. Now I was pretty surprised when it had that on the box. Supports HDR10 and Dolby Vision, so there you go. That's pretty good as well. So all in all, not bad for the price. This is $399. Now, it is on sale from $549 because the NR686 has just been released or is being released. I just saw it on uh, Onkyo's Instagram page. So that's probably why it's on sale. All right, so moving on, we're going to skip this uh, Yamaha because it's only 5.1 channel. Let's go to this. Uh, this Denon, let's check this out real quick. 75 watts per channel. Let's look at the back side here. We've got five HDMI inputs, HDCP 2.2 compatible. 
Uh, we don't have too much connectivity. So again, like if your system is straight up HDMI inputs and maybe like one optical for your TV, if you're not using arc, then, you know, not, not a bad choice, but not a hundred percent great. If you're trying to keep costs low, let's check out what we've got here. Um, Heos multi-room, then we've got Odyssey multi-EQ, Pandora, Sirius XM, Spotify, Apple AirPlay. Supports HDR10 and Dolby Vision. Yeah, so you know, just kind of skimming through. That's that's what I do. I skim through and see what's up. Of course, you know, the front fascia of it, you know, does it look cool? Definitely want to make sure it looks cool. Now here's another thing that you want to look for. This one was $6.99 and now it's $4.99. So you're getting hopefully a better AVR. Now let's check this out. We've got six HDMI inputs, component video inputs, phono stage. So this is almost exactly like the back panel of the TXNR676 that we checked out earlier. Although this one does say 100 watts per channel. Actually, I think the 676 also has that. So. Not really sure. I know this is their RZ line. Oh, look at this 32 bit digital to analog converter. This is probably the same stuff in this one. Hmm, this is very interesting. So maybe skip that 620 and just go with the 676 or the 686. Pretty much could be the same. All right, here's that Sony that we just took a look at. If you didn't see that other video of mine, I'll put a link in the description or a card on top. Now one thing you want to notice here, we do have six HDMI inputs, two HDMI outputs. We do not have a phono stage and we do not have any kind of component video inputs. So if that's important to you, then this is a skip. Otherwise, it seems to be holding up pretty good. I've only had it for about five days, five days, something like that. 100 watts per channel into two channels driven and that's at six ohms. So if you have an eight ohm speaker or, or four ohm speaker, you gotta figure that out. Pandora, iHeartRadio, Google Play Music, Tidal, TuneIn Radio, Apple AirPlay, um, DSD support, doo -doo 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 -doo. and we just keep scrolling. Oh, that's right. Now this only supports HDR10, which is kind of a shame. So if you are looking for something that supports Dolby Vision, then you need to look elsewhere. All right, let's keep going. All right, now the Yamaha V583 is also $499, like that Sony we just looked at. And I am reviewing this one as well. So let's check out the back. Back is kind of limited for HDMI inputs, you know, three analog inputs here. We got a couple of digital inputs here. So not bad. And one thing I want you guys to notice, like check this out. In this price range, so let's go down here to, you want more? Let's check out this 683. So this is normally $100 more. Uh, it's on sale, so it's now $50 more than the 583. Well, let's check this out. So let's look at the back panel on both of these. Now, as you can see, we've got five HDMI inputs, but only three of them are HDCP 2.2 compatible. So this is where you're gonna have your 4K HDR support on three. On these two, you won't. So let's go back here. Now, it only has four HDMI inputs, but all four of them are you know, 4K HDR compatible. So if, again, you have a full HDMI setup, maybe you have you know an optical that you need to use or one or two analogs, and you don't need a phono stage, cool, you can go with this one. Um, we go to the 683, $50 more. We cut down one HDMI 4K compatible HDR input, and you know we get an extra one of these. So maybe put your cable box in here, your direct TV box. If you don't have 4K on one of those boxes and that's just regular, then you can put them in there. Um, this does have two optical, two coaxial, and a phono stage and component video in, which uh, the 583 does not. Uh, you got you get the digital inputs, but you don't get a lot of the stuff that's on here. So if it's worth the 50 bucks for you guys to get more of this connectivity and lose one of the 4k hdr hdmis then you know it's again like this is something you guys got to figure out that's exactly the thought process i went through i'm like you know what i would rather have four hdmi inputs that will accept 4k hdr signals as opposed to three and then two that will not 
Doo -doo -doo. Uh, so we have another sale here, the Onkyo RZ810. So let's check this guy out. Um, it says 130 watts per channel into two channels driven. So you get a little bit more power. And then here we get seven HDMI inputs and two HDMI outputs. And you also get a whole host of uh, pre-outs here. So if you wanted to add some extra power, this is all. This is a good amp to get because you have that flexibility with the pre-outs. Got a phono stage, we've got component video in, a whole slew of uh, analog audio inputs and three digital audio inputs. Now, what do we got down here? It's probably a whole lot of the same stuff. Title, Google Cast, Apple AirPlay, 32-bit, 384 kilohertz DAC. I bet you anything it's that same AKM that's in the RN676. Now it didn't say, I don't think I saw anything about Dolby Vision or HDR10. So let's just do a quick find for Dolby. And let's see, Atmos, Atmos, Atmos. So maybe it does not have Dolby Vision support. So if that's the case, you know, this guy's probably a pass. All right, let's get back over to the main area. This Marantz, here we get the first Marantz. Now, it's only five channels, so let's skip it. <laughs> hey, here's the Onkyo TX-NR777. This is like the step up from the one I got. But everything like kind of looks the same. A little bit more power. Um, not really sure if it's, you know, makes a difference. It's the exact same DAC. Yeah, so it's just for that little bit of power boost. Not sure if it's worth the $50. Uh, Yamaha Avantage A670, 549. Let's check that guy out. This thing looks exactly like the back of the 583. So probably not the best. 80 watts per channel, that's the same. A lot of these things look the same. Burr Brown. Uh, DAC, not sure if that's the DAC. Maybe that could be the difference in the Avantage as opposed to the regular one. Uh, not sure, but that's something definitely to check out if you're in that price range. Uh, the Yamaha 683, same price as the Avantage. Uh, when 10 more watts per channel, supposedly. Um, pretty much the same title, Deezer, that kind of stuff. Probably the same Burr Brown DAC. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, here it is. Dolby Vision compatible. Now it said future updates, but um, the 583 does have the Dolby Vision update, so I would imagine the 683 does. All right, now we're getting into some Denon stuff here. So this is what I do, guys. Like, um, I was looking for AV receivers in the five to six hundred dollar range. You know, um, like this one. Look at this. Look at this guy. It's got seven HDMI inputs. We We've got two component inputs and a component output. Man, that's for like a really old TV. Um, two video outputs. We've got analog ins, two digital inputs, and a coaxial input for digital audio. So this isn't bad as far as connectivity wise. Power says 90 watts per channel into two channels. Heos, multi room. We have Odyssey multi EQ. Uh, Apple AirPlay, Spotify, SiriusXM, Pandora. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I bet you anything, it's probably Dolby Vision HDR10 compatible. There it is. And these usually use the AKM DAX, uh, the Asahi DAX. All right, here's the Denon X1400H. This is like their newer line. And as you can see, it's a little bit more stripped down. So hopefully the components are a little bit better in this AVR. Five HDMI inputs, one output, no component output, no phono stage. We're going to skip this NED because it is not an Atmos. We're going to skip this Yamaha Slimline. And now we're getting into $600, $700 range uh, with the Avantage A770, 649. Now let's check out the back of this. <laughs> you guys, does this look familiar to you? Because this is exactly the same as the V683. Isn't that funny? 
95 watts per channel. Do, do, do. YPAO, room correction, Spotify, Tidal, Deezer, Apple AirPlay, DSD support. That's got the Burr Brown DAC, HDR10, Dolby Vision. Honestly, guys, like this is exactly the same as the other one. I mean, like on paper, it looks exactly the same. So I don't know. I would go with the cheaper one. All right, Onkyo RZ line 820. Now here's the thing about, um, let's say my budget was $600, but look at this. This is a thousand dollar receiver that's on sale. It's discounted $300 and it's selling for 700. Now we have 130 watts per channel into two channels. So that's uh, pretty substantial if it's actually true. Now we go here and we've got pretty much the same back as a lot of the other ones, but we do have the pre outs that'll help with any kind of like flexibility as far as, you know, if you want to add a power amp or whatever you can. So again, we're kind of getting into the same situations. Oh, this is THX certified. So if that is important to you, then there you go. I think that's the big difference with this 820. All right, here we go. 32-bit, 384 kilohertz digital analog converter. I bet you that's at AKM. Uh, DAC, you got HDR10 and Dolby Vision support. Very cool. So this is not a bad option here. Like if you were in the five to six hundred dollar range, maybe stretching it up to get, you know, a receiver that was a thousand dollars for seven hundred dollars, not a bad deal. And here we have a Sony uh, ES line. We are getting into the, their higher end line, seven ninety nine down to six ninety nine. So how does this compare with the Onkyo that we just saw for six ninety nine? Let's check out the back. Well, mm, this looks pretty much just like the ten eighty. And let's check out some stats, 90 watts per channel into two channels, six ohms. So you have to do that calculation. I don't even know what that is. Uh, same kind of streaming, Spotify, Tidal, iHeartRadio, Google Play, uh, DSD support. Okay, this is just HDR10. So no Dolby Vision there. Works with Google Home voice activated controller. Okay. That's cool. So that's an interesting option. Uh, Marantz, here we are with the first Marantz, 749. So if I was to keep into my $600 price range, this is just outside it. Now this is has a lot less power, 50 watts per channel, two channels driven. That is crazy small. Um, but it is the slimline. So if you're looking to save space, hey, look at this. Just, you get seven HDMI inputs, uh, component input and output. What else do we have? Subwoofer pre-outs, we have a front pre-out. That's interesting. So is that right? Okay, so check this out. You can actually put more power into this if you want to. Do, 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 do. All right, so what else do we get with this Marantz here? Not that much on the wattage. We do get Odyssey Room Correction, Sirius XM, Pandora, Tidal, Spotify, blah, 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 blah. Same stuff there. HDR10 and Dolby Vision compatible. So, hey, if you are looking for, um, you know, something slimline, you can check out this Marantz. It's a little pricey, though, I think, for what you get. All right, so you guys pretty much get the idea. You know, the first thing I do is I turn around to check out the backside. Oh, yeah. And see what you get. That's what I do. That's the first thing I do. And then then we look at all the numbers for wattage. I know it's kind of like hard to tell what's actually what with wattage. And then you go through and look for the, um, you know, what, what does it support? What can it do? Can it do any of the things I needed to do? That's pretty much the situation. All right, so let's check out some uh, nine channel AV receivers, okay? So getting into the nine channel receivers, starting at the, oh, 
oh here since we're at this Cambridge let's check this out real quick now this is twelve hundred dollars now this is one thing that's interesting you guys know uh, Cambridge audio makes the CX UHD which is like the clone of the Oppo UDP 203 it's been in the news a lot or at least I've been talking about it for a, lot, a little while now because it actually um, you know uh, m performs just like the Oppo 203 anyway so this is a 7.2 channel home theater receiver by Cambridge audio Now, what I found interesting was this 100 watts per channel into 8 ohms with two channels driven and guess what they tell you they tell you how many watts per channel with seven channels driven that's great I think this is huge like we this this stat 60 watts per channel into 8 ohms with 7 channels driven that is great at least we know we know what that's gonna put out so I think that's pretty awesome now as far as far as everything else you know this is uh, they use a Cirrus Logic DSPs and Cirrus Logic DAC now this I think is their entry level. Now this is not an Atmos AV receiver. I don't think they have one yet. I think they're gonna come out with one soon. But that was definitely interesting to check out. This actually, you know, they actually put a seven channel driven uh, a number there. So we know what's going on wattage wise. All right. All right, anyway, so here we are with the Denon X5200W. Excuse me, so that means it does not have Heos. Let's check it out. Seven HDMI inputs, great. All right, so let's check out this pre-out section. One, two, three, four, five. So there's the top five, and then we've got surround, surround back, height one, and height two. So we have processing for 11 channels, but it can only power nine channels, okay? Why is this important? All right, so look at this. This is normally $1,300, okay? Now, let's just check out what do we got here, 140 watts per channel into two channels driven. So if we saw that the Cambridge had 100 watts per channel into two channels driven, and we have 60 watts per channel into seven. So maybe this is around that same thing. Maybe we'll get 70, 80 watts per channel with seven channels driven. I don't know. Um, this does have Oro 3D upgrade for uh, $200. So you gotta pay that to Denon. Um, now here's, you, you, you get all the cool stuff. Malt XQ, XT32, advanced room correction, you get the iPhone, you get uh, all, all this stuff. All this stuff that, you know, is normal um, that you would normally get from a receiver costing like this price, like 1300 bucks. Here's the thing. This is my advice to everybody that is looking for an 11 channel AV receiver. So here's the thing. If you wanted a full 11 channel setup, I would recommend getting a nine channel Atmos AVR. Why is that? Because we've got pre outs, we've got processing for 11 channels, and guess what? We have, uh, let, we have an $1,100, let's say $1,200 price tag. And all we need to do is go over here and go to like, boom. Outlaw model 500, 120 watts RMS times five, all channels driven simultaneously into eight ohms. So for $600 plus you're at $1,200, you're at $1,800 and you've got an 11 channel setup where you know your five, you know, five channels is actually getting 120 watts per channel, right? Or if you, you know, wanted to go just a little bit less, we've got this Motiva A500, and we go to specs and downloads here, we've got um, 80 watts per channel, RMS, all channels driven, okay? Uh, Emotiva even has an A5175, which is $800, you know, so we're at $2,000 now, and you know you're going to get, you're actually going to get 125 watts per channel RMS, all channels driven. So these are your options. Like if you were going for, um, or if you wanted to just start off with a small Atmos setup, get one of these guys, a nine channel and you want to expand to 11 channel when you have time, you can do that. Or if you just want an 11 channel, you can get this and a power amp 
for the same price and you know you're gonna get the exact power that the power amp is advertising all right let's keep going all right this is seven channel seven channel let's go nine channel Marantz here we are 13.99 on sale from twenty two hundred dollars really twenty two hundred dollars the SR seven zero one one so I guess it's a it's a steal at eight hundred bucks right 125 watts per channel two channels driven okay let's check this guy out let's check out the back side here we go boom this looks almost exactly the same uh, things are in different different places on that denon but uh we still get uh, we still get height one height two so we still get 11 channel processing with this guy so again you know i'm not sure how much this is actually outputting you know 125 watts per channel into two channels you got aura 3d um like all these things are pretty much going to be the same the DAC is going to probably be the yep asahi kasai micro devices the akm DAC. now this one does have a higher uh sample rate so you know could be a little bit better than the what what was in the the onkyos i believe and let's see you know if you're thinking about it look at that 13.99 and if you wanted to add you know amplifiers you can and you're still at like the same price and with you know, true power or whatever you like to call it all right so let's keep going so now this is the one i have it is fourteen hundred dollars it's 11 channel denon avr x 6300h and you know i like it i bought it because i wanted 11 channel atmos or at least to grow into it but if i were to do it all again i would probably go with the x 4400h and get myself a power amp mm -hmm. here we are again nine channels 1499 mm. pretty much you guys everything's kind of the same kind of the same when you get up to, to this like price point they're all kind of the same they have all the same features the, um, the digital to analog converter is probably going to be uh, something that's different. You're going to have a different looking UI. You know, now they should all have HDR10 and Dolby Vision at this price point. It's really just up to you on like what brand you like. You know, some people say the Moran sounds better. Oh, this one has a Zone 2 for HDMI out. So. You know if that's important to you there you go that's what you got you got something a little bit extra there with the zone 2 um, video onkyo's rz920 is the same price as the as that uh that we just took a look at and here on the back now the back looks a little bit different we do have seven hdmi outs so we have 11 speaker uh outputs here but it only powers nine but we do have the um, two different height sections here. So we do have 11 channel processing, two HDMI outputs. You know, so that's kind of the situation here. You know, 135 watts per channel, two channels driven. It's all pretty much the same when you're getting into this price range. Here's the X4400H, 1599. Uh, 125 watts per channel into two channels. So, uh, whatever that means to you guys, I know it's, I know this is kind of redundant and everything's kind of sounding the same, but this is, this is what shopping for this stuff is about. You know, do you go with the brand that you like, the brand that you know? Um, do you want to add external amplification? You know, it's all up to you guys. Like what fits your situation? Oh, here's another one. Yamaha Aventage A2070, 1600 bucks. Check this out on the back. Ooh, wow! This is uh, this. This looks nice. I like this. All right, looks like we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this one actually does not have 11 channel processing. So I don't know if that's important to you. You know, this is probably a skip. 
But let's see what else it's got. 140 watts per channel is a two. So we got more power when we go up in price. Same streaming options. Oh, here we go. Dual ESS Saber Premier digital analog converters. So here we go. This is what's a little bit different. Okay. Dolby Vision, HDR10, all that good stuff. So, okay, not bad, not bad. It's got the ESS Saber DAC in there. Sony ES, that's only a seven channel. Uh, the Avantage A3070, $2,000. So here we are getting into uh, the $2,000 range. Um, doo -doo -doo. So this is nine channel. That's it. It's not an 11 channel processor. Zone 2 HDMI out. ESS Saber Pro Premier DAC. Okay. That's even better than the other one. I think. No, I think that was the same one. Let's go back. 27? And let's. ESS. Man. Sabra. There we go. Premiere. The other one's a Premiere Pro 192, 24 bit. Ooh. Ah, see, this is a different DAC. This is a better one. It's a 32 bit 192 kilohertz Sabre Pro Premiere. Converts converters for seven main channels. So, oh, wow, really? So it's just for seven channels hmm that's weird uh, look at this Marantz one nine channel for 2200 like these these prices are nuts this Sony a 5000 ES Wow what does this thing have so it's 11 channels let's get back it's 11 channel processing yeah pre outs for all that what is all this network stuff? I've never seen that before. Uh, no phono stage here. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah. Uh, so if that's important to you, this is a skip and only five HDMI inputs. Hmm. Interesting. Why'd you do that, Sony? And so far, it's just HDR10 support. Not sure if they're gonna do that upgrade it with a firmware update but like I said before in other videos if it doesn't have it it doesn't have it oh now we're getting to the pricier stuff like $24.99 for just a seven channel Atmos situation here from Anthem now of course you know Anthem their room correction is supposed to be really stellar um, but I mean this is pretty basic like uh, let's see it says height to it says all this stuff so does it actually support you know 11 channel processing let's see doesn't say oh look at this 32 bit 768 kilohertz DAC I wonder which one they use HDR10 and Dolby Vision may require a firmware update for Dolby Vision I actually saw something about this being done so it says 11.2 channel preamp output so I think you can uh, get 11 channels out of this so you know it's gonna be pricey, but you get yourself another <laughs> five channel amplifier, whatever, spend another 600 bucks, and you've got that awesome Anthem Room correction, and 11 channels for $3,000. If you go with that outlaw amp we looked at earlier, there you go. Marantz, $3,000 for their 11 channel. 140 watts into two. All the same stuff. Let's see, is there any mention of the DAC? AKM DAC 32 bit, 192 kilohertz. Sounds familiar to me. Dolby Vision N HDR10. What does the back of this guy look like? Oh, look at this. They want to show you the inside of this, show you this uh, transformer here. 11 identical amp channels and centrally mounted oversized tri toroidal transformer. Toroidal. Toroidal. 
So, is this putting out the advertised amount of wattage? This one might be. Who knows? I, I don't know, man. 11 channels. 11 channels. 140 watts per channel. I don't know. I don't know. It looks pretty impressive, though. $3,000. Out of stock. Okay, and then we got Onkyo RZ 3100, $3,000, 140 watts per channel, two channels driven. Let's check out the back. And it all kind of looks the same, 7 HDMI ins. Do we have a phono stage? Yes, we do. Um, we've got pre-outs for everything. Uh, oh, do, do. Okay. THX Select plus certification so I guess that's what you're paying for too can't forget about that everything's the same we have a 32 bit 384 kilohertz DAC so pretty good definitely not run in the mill and, and you know but look look I mean it's like three thousand dollars so I don't know all right here thirty four hundred dollars for this anthem and we do have 11 channels of amplification on this guy here. So $3,500 for that. This is what the back looks like. Uh, let's see what else we can find out. Do, do, DTSX, Dolby, Dolby Atmos, of course. Now here's that DAC. This one's probably better than some of the other DACs. 768 kilohertz. 32-bit depth. All right, so let's get out of this guy. And here we are, the mother of all AV receivers right now. The Denon X8500H, $4,000, 13.2 channel. Atmos AV receiver in either black or silver. This thing is a monster. I saw this at CES 2018, and this is just, just ridiculous. We actually have 15 speaker terminals here. So if you're doing some crazy like Oro 3D setup, this is, might be the one for you. Or if you want all the six Atmos channels or ceiling speakers and you got like rows and rows of seating, very cool. This does have a phono stage. You know, this, this guy's pretty much got everything. Does it tell you what kind of DAC it has? Let's see. I don't think so. 150 watts per channel with two channels driven. So we have no idea how many watts are going to that 13 channels. So let's go check things out. Everything looks pretty much the same. Dan and Link, where's the, doesn't talk about a digital analog converter. Second zone, third zone. Ooh, Amazon Alexa compatible voice assistant. Okay, there you go. Oro 3D built in. Oh, so you don't have to upgrade to Oro 3D. All right, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, you have some options. And if you want to go 11 channels, I would recommend not spending 3,000. I would recommend spending 2,000 by getting yourself a nine channel, like this Denon 4400H and getting yourself any kind of like five channel amplifier at whichever price point that you, you know, you feel comfortable with. Oops. Oh, you know what? We never took out we never um, checked out Pioneer. Um, it's here on the Best Buy site. And, you know, as far as Pioneer is concerned, if you guys like Pioneer, uh, they don't have it on Crutchfield. So let's just check out some Pioneer real quick. Here's their uh, $500 option, six HDMI ins. You know, it's got a phono stage, it's got component in composite in not bad for 500 bucks uh, let's go check out their nine channel receiver 9.2 1600 dollars and here again you know you can get if this hello if this can uh, process 11 let's check out the back we've got height one and height two so yeah it's going to process 11 channels um, and then their 11 channel is again $3,000. So yeah, I, like I said guys, you can save yourself some money. Get yourself a nine channel that'll 
process 11 get yourself five channel amplifier and you've got 11 channels for two thousand dollars instead of three thousand dollars know what i'm saying all right well i hope you guys learned a lot i hope you guys got an idea of what i look for when i go shopping for av receivers and yeah let's let's finish this video all right everybody there you have it there's a lot of information in this video and if you have any questions go ahead and leave them down in the comments below or hit me up on facebook twitter instagram oh and i just added snapchat so if you want to hit me up on snapchat as well go ahead and do so now like i said there's a lot of information and it is kind of daunting at times but just know this it's not that difficult to grasp once you get the concept then, you know, just looking at all these different manufacturers of AVRs is actually pretty easy. Like I said, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. And if you like this video, go ahead and smash that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel using the button in the middle of your screen. Once again, my name is Chana D. I'm your Techno Dad. I'll see you next time.